Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. Well, if you're thinking of buying a smartphone for your child this Christmas, there are some important factors you might want to consider. These devices can come at a cost, not only financially, but more so to your child's well-being. So for perspective on this all, important decision, very important decision, we spoke with author and Bark Chief Parent Officer to Tanya Jordan. Take a look. Titania, it is the age-old question, well, maybe not age-old, but maybe a decade-old question, when should we get a smartphone for our children? Oh, man, you're just <laughs> giving me the hard one right away. Right. <laughs> but in all honesty, it's not an easy answer. Every child is ready for a smartphone at a different age. Some children need them younger. Maybe they live in dual households or have health issues, um, and some children just are not emotionally or from a maturity standpoint, ready for a smartphone. So short answer is there is no good age. You have to trust your gut yeah. and don't feel like you have to give your child a device just because all of their friends have one. All right, so what are the best ways to research which phone is the right one for your child? There's so many out there. There really are so many options out there for children's first smartphones. And if you'd like to save time and not have to do all the research, <laughs> you can go to the Bark blog. It's bark.us slash blog. From there, you can read all about the pros and cons of iPhones and Androids and other types of phones. Um, if you don't have time, I can save you the time and tell you that if you're going to get your child a smartphone, an Android is a safer bet than an iPhone, Ooh. and the pinwheel phone is actually a really good first choice for kids. Okay, excellent. And now let's talk about the top things that we as parents can do to safeguard those devices before they're wrapped up and under the tree. I am so glad you pointed out that before they're wrapped and under the tree. So just like you don't give your child a bike, for the holidays <laughs> right. and not give them a helmet. You don't give them one of these before you have opened it, implemented the free built-in parental controls that come with each smartphone and put an app like Bark on it. You need to put Bark on your children's smartphones. It's an app, charge it up, then rewrap it and then put it under the tree. <laughs> so they're set up for success when they have access. That was a great analogy. I love that. I know a lot of parents out there who are listening, uh, that's key information for them. All right, now let's talk about particular apps that we should be aware of right now. I feel like, oh, there's just so many ones. Um, it, it really is overwhelming that we'll hear or, you know, I'll go to Bark and they'll say, be on the lookout for this particular one and, and you know, be careful about it. So tell us what we need to be aware of. The first thing to be aware of is the fact that any app can be dangerous. There aren't certain apps that are super dangerous and apps that are safe. Even Pinterest can have really problematic, controversial content within it. Doesn't mean your child should or should not use that app. Children today are really into TikTok and Snapchat oh, yeah. and Instagram and Kick and WhatsApp. And, you know, before you let your child have access to any of these applications, you as a parent need to spend time in them. If you don't know what a child can do and see within that app, don't give them access. Wow, so this is all so good for me with my 11 and 13 year old. All right, now let's talk about parental monitoring. Uh, I know this is a hot topic. A lot of parents, not me, think, oh, well, you know, I want them to have their privacy, but this is so, so important in this day and age. I, I would think that you're gonna tell me you agree, right? Be nosy, I, monitor. I wholeheartedly agree. You know, your children can have privacy. You can help them become a responsible digital native without being a helicopter parent and use Bark. Bark will send you alerts when there's an issue, but not give you everything that they're doing, everything that their friends are doing, and let them have that semblance of freedom. It's a different world. As you know, mm -hmm. as I know, I have a 12-year-old son. They are growing up in a world like no other child has grown up in. They need us now more than ever, and they're spending more time than ever in these phones. Right, and so I know we can all feel very overwhelmed by the process of protecting them, uh, the technology. So what are resources out there that you can share to help take away that anxiety? Well, thank you for asking. Uh, first thing is just take a deep breath. Give yourself some grace. It is not easy. Mm -hmm. Second thing is lean on other parents, lean on the community right. that's out there. There's a Facebook group called Parenting in a Tech World with over 150,000 parents in it right now talking about these issues, helping each other in real time. Some great experts in there. It's a wonderful group. 
Any special things that Bark is going to do during the holidays or is currently doing to help parents make that easy uh, smartphone decision? Yes. Well, we have done the research for you and have surfaced that the pinwheel phone is the best first smartphone for a child, if and when you make that decision. Also, we have this group. Please join the group. Please learn from others. If you would like to get Bark for your child's phone, highly recommend. Mm -hmm. We've got a free trial. You can go to bark.us to get started. Thank you so much. I always love talking to you. Have the best holiday. Thank you so much. Same to you. All right, thanks so much to Titania. And we'd also like to thank Bark Technologies and Pinwheel Phones for sponsoring that segment.